I am thrilled to be joined by the legendary Michael Mandavi here in beautiful Carneros. Hi, Michael. Nice to see you. Hello. It's great to be with you. Well, this is such a real treat for me. I started off introducing you as a legend. I don't use that term lightly. You really have such an amazingly rich history in the Napa Valley and in the wine culture in America. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about your background for anyone who doesn't know? Well, I had the luxury of growing up literally 200 yards from the Charles Krug Winery and the cellar master was my babysitter and the winery was my jungle gym. In 1966, my father and I started the Robert Mondavi Winery. We had three employees, my father, myself, one other, and I had the luxury of being the first winemaker for the first eight or nine years. And uh, there were very few wineries in Napa Valley at that time. Uh, and we were the first new winery since repeal of Prohibition. And that was a, a great experience growing the Robert Mondavi Winery with my father and then later my brother and sister. What's really exciting to me now, though, is uh, that we have developed our new winery. And uh, we acquired uh, this winery in 2006. And my son, daughter, and I are thrilled to be able to put the four generations of experience in to the future. This is really a family business. You have your whole family here working. You've got your son, your daughter, a label named after your wife. The simple thing is if, if you love the people that you're working with, it makes it a lot more fun and easier. And one thing I've really tried to do is make sure that each of the members of the family can express their personality. In, with the Isabel Mondavi wines, she likes wines that are a little lower in alcohol with rich flavors and not too much oak, just a kiss of the oak. And so our son Rob produces the Isabel Mondavi wines, and we don't call him the winemaker, we call him the interpreter. Oh. And his job is to make mama happy. <laughs> How's um, he doing? He's doing great. And then with the emblem wines, my son and daughter work on that together. Rob is the lead winemaker, and they want to bring their four generations of history and of knowledge growing up in the vineyards from selecting the best lands, the best grapes, with their sense of the foods, the style of wines today, for the foods that their generation enjoys. And then with the M Cabernet, that is, is my jewel from the little vineyard on Atlas Peak with all this volcanic rock. and. I love making wines that are in the classic Bordeaux style. Uh, in the 60s, when I started making wines, we were comparing the Napa wines with the great wines of Bordeaux. And we knew we had the soil, the climate, the grape varieties, and we knew we were gaining the knowledge to produce wines that would compete with the great wines of the world. The neat thing is, we in Napa Valley and in California have now produced wines that compete with the best of the best anywhere in the world. And it's really fun to be able to do that and impart part of your heritage and part of your personality and style into the wine. You were instrumental in bringing fine wines to America, to the American culture. How do you pass that on to your children? If you ever have like maybe one or two pieces of advice that you hope that they take from you, what would that be? Simply look in the mirror and make sure you do what makes you happy. Don't do it to please any other member of your family or to try to fill some shoes that were before you. Uh, if it makes you happy, you'll do it well. If it doesn't make you happy, you'll struggle. Do you think that's the secret to longevity in this business? Well, also that and drinking some good red wine. <laughs> Speaking of good red wine, I mean, we got it sitting right in front of us. I got to drink some. I'll have you talk, Michael. This is 100% Cabernet from our Atlas Peak Animo Vineyard. Animo is Italian, and my daughter came up with the word that said, Dad, this area, this vineyard has soul or spirit. And as a result, we named the vineyard Animo. 100% uh, of the grapes are from that vineyard, and it's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. When you taste it, full, rich body, but with elegance. It can't hit you. It shouldn't compete with food. It should cleanse the palate, excite the taste buds, so that it says, enjoy the next bite of food, 
or welcome back to the glass, have another sip. I'll take w welcome back to the glass, I'll take another sip. Summer's here, uh, weather's beautiful. A big question I get from people all the time is, uh, what are we drinking for summer? What wines are you excited about for summer? I love rosés for summer, and my wife, a number of years ago, said to our son Rob, Rob, you know those beautiful light rosés that we enjoy in France, will you make me some? A long story short is, he did and it's called Deep Rosé of Cabernet Sauvignon. In addition, we found that particularly in the summer when I get home and I like cooking and doing a little grilling, etc., I will take a wine glass and fill it with ice and have, as we call it, Isabel Rocks. See, Michael's breaking the rules. Who says you can't put ice in wine? You put ice in not very good wine? It'll just be cold wine that doesn't taste very good. You put ice in wine that tastes good, it'll be refreshing and taste great. Michael, I used to put squirt in my wine in college, but hey, what do you know? That's the sangria. <laughs> You've seen so many changes uh, throughout the course of your life, I'm sure. What do you see for the future of, of the wine industry here? Well, for the wine industry, I think it's the most exciting era of the wine industry since the repeal of Prohibition. Uh, it's amazing. And the reason is I see so many young people that are interested in wine and food today, and they're not just looking at the ratings and saying, oh, I have to learn to like this wine. They're trusting their palate. They're tweeting with friends, and they're saying, did you try that M. Cabernet? It is spectacular. You should try it. They're trusting their own taste buds. And that is the greatest thing in the world for the wine business today and in the future. Right to that. Do you have a motto or a slogan or any sort of, I know certain families sometimes have a cheers that they say before they have a drink. Do you have anything like that in yours? Good health and happiness. Well, cheers. Here's to good health and happiness. Here, here.